Good morning. My name is Rabbi Yehuda Levi from Yeshivat Harabayit. Many people have the opinion that it is a sword to go up to Harabayit. There's a strict prohibition to go up to Harabayit. I'm going to explain why that's a myth and why that is completely untrue and there is zero reason to be afraid to go up to Harabayit today provided that one follows the halakha of going to a mikvah, not wearing leather shoes and treating the place with respect. Let's get started. Over here behind me, we have a beautiful map of the Harabayit. Over here is the Rechavat HaKotel. This is the area of the Kotel Plaza. Over here, it's just a very small area about this entire very large area of the Harabayit. This section of the Kotel is in fact just a small section of the entire Herodian West Wall that continues all the way till here. And over here you have the Herodian North Wall and the Herodian East Wall and the Herodian South Wall. There is only one area on Harabayit that a Tamei Met is not allowed to go inside with an Issa and that is the area where the Beit HaMikdash stood on Harabayit. Well, you may ask, how would we know where it stood? The longest standing tradition in Am Yisrael's history from Bayit Sheni till today with a long paper trail delineating exactly how we know this is that the site of the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh HaKadoshim, looking here at the model of the Beit HaMikdash and the back of the Beit HaMikdash to the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the site of that Kodesh HaKadoshim was right here on the stone that was inside the building called the Dome of the Rock. In Arabic, it's known as the Sakra Stone. To us, it's known as the Evan Shasiyah, the Rock of Conception. The first thing was created when Hashem created the world. And that's located right over here inside this building. Since we have Mishnayat Midot, we can know exactly how large the actual building of the, of the Heichal was. And therefore, we can now have a location to pinpoint where the Beit HaMikdash stood on Harabayit, which means we now know where a Tamei Met, a tamei met someone who is impure from coming in contact with a dead body, must avoid. They must avoid this area. Now, we're actually stricter than that, and we avoid this entire elevated platform, because once a person is on this elevated platform, there's no clear delineating line to separate where one is walking in a place that is permitted by Halakha, and where a place is forbidden by Halakha. So as a result, we avoid this entire platform. Not only that one who comes up dressed like a Jew and is part of those that go up uh, uh, and make Aliyah Kehalacha, they cannot physically enter into an area where there would be a Safek Karet because the, the route that we take the, is, is guarded by police officers and we do not go even slightly into the area that there is a problem. Not only that, the police will not let you move from that very specific line. So therefore, there is zero chance that one would come even close to going up to the elevated platform. And therefore, that is a very, very far shash, and one does not have to be concerned about that happening. The other halachot that one needs to know is that the rest of the Temple Mount is the status of Machan Eleviyah. The Pasuk tells us in Parshas Nasso, Sabbat b'nei Yisrael v'shalchu mena machane kol tzaruah v'chol zav v'chol tamela nafesh. Three types of Tumah. Rashi explains that in that a Mitzora is not allowed in Machane Israel. A Zav, someone who has Tumah that comes out from his body, is not allowed in Machane Leviyah. And a Tamimet is only not allowed in Machane Shechina, as we mentioned earlier. The Gemara in Zvachim tells us that just as there were camps in the Midbar, so too there are camps in Jerusalem. Yerushalayim is considered Machane Israel. Harabayis is Machane Leviyah, and Machane Shechina is the location where the actual building of the Temple stood on Harabayit. So therefore, since one knows now how, where Machane Leviyah is, which is all Harabayit, and where is Machane Shechina, we can now know where one is left to go into Harabayit, provided that they follow the halachot that are put over here. So that means one who comes up to Harabayit must be careful for more Mikdash, one has to go to a mikvah Kalacha in order to get rid of Tumat Zav. So for a woman that's following the halachot, speak to a rabbi to understand how that is, and for a man to go to a mikvah, unless one has an STD, which at that point he should discuss it with his rabbi. And following the rules of Moreh Mikdash of not going on with leather shoes, anything that one can wear in Yom Kippur is allowed, and to go specifically on the route that the police will guide you by to ensure that one does not enter into a place that is forbidden. We look forward to greeting you here at Harabayit. May we be zoche to see the Binyan Beit HaMikdash HaShlishi B'mhera B'yamenu Amen. Amen.